what the Greeks believed and what the Arabics believed. The Arabs believed about about the sky and about the vaulted dome and about that everything on Earth, that, that Earth is geocentric and flat and that everything revolves around us, which we now know to be true. We know that to be the case. And then he points out they, they actually build their own Arabic model of the dome and he presents from inside the dome right here. And while he's in there, he's talking about that as the vault spins above our heads and the signs come into aspect, that they begin to affect us, or that they are affecting us. And then he shows the planetary bodies here, the sun, Jupiter, the sun and moon, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, Venus, etc. So you can see that here, he pops through, pops through the... Uh, planets and then he shows how you can he shows how you can navigate with this astrolabe he shows how it works he puts it up to his eye he shows you how you line it up on the front the way that the stars are and you flip it over and there's two knobs on the back here and they indicate the date put it up to your eye and you find the star and you tilt this part down to the part that matches up with the star that you're looking at then you turn it sideways and read it again and, and get your reading on your bearing on. It tells you that if you can see this star from this angle and this star from this angle, you look at your your Ptolemaic. Now, this is Ptolemy, which is the flat Earth model. It's another thing they don't want us to tie together, that it was from Ptolemy's charts, star charts. So where are these records? Why don't we get to read the Ptolemaic star charts? Why don't we all learn them in school? Anyways, that's a side issue very important but so so he comes back to the star charts and he says Ptolemy you know you check your Ptolemaic star charts and it says if if you see this star from here and this star from here this is the place on the world that you must be and that's based on a geocentric model and it tells you exactly where you are on earth and those astrolabes were made thousands of years ago and they still work you don't have to adjust them there is no retrogradation or uh, uh, ecliptic retrogradation. And so that doesn't happen. You can take this astrolabe from a thousand years ago, and you can take Ptolemy's star charts from a thousand years ago and find out exactly where you are on Earth today. So it's just another interesting point that it shows that that they lie again about the ecliptic and that there's this precession of the equinoxes. It doesn't happen. Everything is where it was. It doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the way the sun is spinning inside the flat earth. The dome is rotating at a four minute different time period. And so that means that after every year, four minutes, it's going to be off by a bit. But then after so many years, it's going to come back around again. And, yeah, so that's that. It really shows you that nothing is changing. The stars are fixed in the sky. We all know this. Anyways, everyone who's a flat earther and is following this for that reason. My movies, I'm not making them anymore for newbies to flat earth. These are for people that know the earth is flat and want to know more about it about the whys and hows and of the deception and how it actually functions, how the earth actually functions. So, after, then he shows you the Caliph al-Mansur and he shows you this chart. And he shows you that as you place the aspects of your birth into the positions on the chart, the Caliph got sick and he finally, after almost dying, he calls in a man comes down from the mountains, a, a priest, an astrologer from the mountains comes down and casts his uh, horoscope onto this chart and then finds, oh, look, and he, and he points it right out to you here. Look, you've got, uh, what is this, Mars or Mercury? He says, you've got such and such in in, in Mars and such and such in, in Mercury, and, and that'll give you a tummy ache, and this will give you a... Uh, indigestion and, and diarrhea and upset some or whatever headache uh, bad back bad liver whatever it is he points all the, he puts them all in the house here and says 
well, no wonder. This is the one right here. It says, no wonder you're sick. This is, uh, this is your aspects, how they all line up. And then he says, now that sounds like a bunch of hoggly wash, you know, a bunch of crap, doesn't it? And then he says, I would think so too, but history records that that is what he had and that he got better shortly thereafter, and then that astrologer was made extremely well to do. And so what he's talking about there is that the vaulted dome can heal us, and that you wouldn't want to let that out to the peasants, that you could just heal yourself with astrology in the dome, and good knowledge of the dome. You have to remember that at this time, most people were illiterate. So just basic things, uh, people didn't know then. They didn't know to wash. Now this has all been... This is another thing that he talks about, that the Dark Ages were not actually dark, that they were only dark for certain people, that uh, that really we have been duped that there is a worldwide conspiracy. James Burke says that in this other interview that I'm going to post soon as well. Okay, so after that, what we get into is the clocks. At the time, um, you would need to be awakened in the middle of the night to conduct your prayers. And how do you wake up at 5 in the morning when it's still dark out with a sundial or with candlelight? He talks about that they have sundials and candles and um, and they have and what they do have is this one clock. that this, this clock is the first one that they made and it's a water clock. And it works by, and this is it here. And you can see there's no front face on it, okay? There's no clock face yet. All it does is it moves this wheel, the water drips, fills the bucket, and pushes these wooden bits up and then they hit a metal tang and it it's kind of like a Rube Goldbergian design and it throws a heavy weight off and then when the weight falls it dings the bell. So and this wakes you up at five in the morning to do your prayers. So shortly after inventing this one, you know, 300 years later, while they're in the middle of their sea voyages, and he talks about it as though it's Galileo discovering the pendulum. And that's not what happened. He says it's the legend. It's really interesting how he lays it out in their official narrative. And then he does his own, throws his own little bit on there. And he tells you that it's just the legend. So anyways, he's in this, he's in the Tower of Pisa showing you um, the swinging, the swinging pendulum. And, sh and talking about that, okay, this is an extremely accurate uh, form of measurement. And so the pendulum is the next one of the next major pieces that goes into the clock that is extremely accurate. And then he talks about here, right on this picture here, he's showing you about the lock mechanism, which is right here, and showing you how these, this gear is moving and connecting against the teeth and going tick-tock, tick-tock. And then he shows you here how Galileo or whoever had discovered the pendulum and how it was extremely accurate and that they linked that into the clockworks and made extremely accurate clocks but that those wouldn't function on an on a long ocean voyage because imagine how the pendulum would work on a rocking ship and that it would throw off the pendulum which is true so after that he brings you back to Antwerp and shows you Germany and shows you and I'll show you these pictures here. And he shows you this, that uh, they were renowned metal workers. And so they stopped making their clocks in wood and started making it in metal works. About you move on to these ones that are wound by a chain. This one here, this mechanism on this clock here. So, and then these become seaworthy. So now these are what become the, the main clock that kind of takes over the world because you can take this clock out in the ocean or take it thousands of miles away and it's gonna continue to function properly on the ocean waves are not salt or not so and then he talks about okay now finally and he shows you the globe and shows you how if you're moving west off the coast of Africa here that in order to tell your longitudes you need an accurate clock that knows how far you've moved or how much time has gone by as you've moved that distance so you see how he's linked the clock to world navigation okay so you can clearly see how world navigation cartography 
and the clock and how the elites at Antwerp who invented these clocks and were he gets into this as well he gets into Columbus and talks about what they were actually doing when they were finding the new world and that's also going to we're going to come back on that we're going to touch on that again shortly in the other readings that I'm doing with you guys that there's in the the preview to this piece and it's secret voyages and that touches on it as well it's going to touch on the actual intrigue going on in the elite circles of Europe and other places around the world at that time and what their actual motivations were for going to the new world and what what really happened there and so I think that we've I've clearly shown you I think I've shown you enough now how the clock links to navigation and how we don't know what it is the chicken or the egg was it the flat earth that they discovered first after finding the telescope or was it that they invented the clock and it just happened to fit onto the flat earth face which having said that it sounds ludicrous it, it's obvious that they found the way that the earth is first the cartographers did and they shared this information among themselves and kept it only in elite circles this enlightened knowledge this special knowledge that gives you power so what more knowledge could there be to give you power than the knowledge of the shape of the place that you put your feet every day and the functionings and the workings of that place what larger knowledge can you think of that would be more important to hold back from people is the knowledge of their actual environment that they live in every day if you can fool people about their environment and tell them not to believe their own eyes, what else can you get them to do? Anything. So, the other point we're going to touch on here, I'm going to go back on it now. This is supposed to be 1585 to 1609, when we're at, the, when we're at Pisa here, with Galileo. And this is when he is supposed to have gotten the telescope first into his hands. Now, what I would put together there is that not that this is the first time that he could look up in the sky, which is something they would do, something they did do. But what was more important is that they used it and they looked out on the ocean and they were able to determine for sure that ships didn't go over the horizon, that they could be pulled back into view and that the water is indeed flat, making the Earth one gigantic flat plane of water which is why I call my channel Flat Water. Because you know, as soon as you know that the water is flat, then you know that the Earth is flat as well. So, I'm gonna, just because of the problems that I've had with this movie, I'm going to stop here. We'll continue this with the next one, and I'll see you guys shortly. Thanks for joining me at Flat Water. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao.